guest lecture. Is that okay? Yeah. Dr. Nathan Cooper. Is that right? PhD. Yale. Can he possibly be right? No. They made fun of me when I wore my Yale sweatshirt down here. He's going to talk to you about under pressure. use letters, then this is F over A. Um, so if I'm standing up here and you ask, what, what is the pressure that I'm exerting on the floor? Uh, so you have me standing here. Um, and if you look at my feet, um, two feet here. Uh, and if you look at the vertical, then this is approximately uh, one sixth of a meter. This is maybe a third of a meter. So if you write out the equals uh, G in Equals, uh, so this is equal to my weight, which is I'm basically Peter Pan. It's uh, five kilograms times about ten meters per second squared. Uh, and so A would be about one sixth of a meter times one. Third of a meter, uh, which is equal to one eighteenth. Here's what. Uh, so if we take the, the ratio of these, uh, this implies that the pressure is equal to about uh, ninety seven hundred. Um, uh, newtons per meter square. Uh, and the SI unit for this is, uh, so newtons per meter squared, these are both SI units. Um, but for pressure, the SI unit is newtons per meter squared, which is equal to Pascal's is equal to, uh, so you say, so you write PA. So you could write 9700 PA. Just a question. 
I think it's the area of the tipping point of the stiletto is, is so small. Well, there has to be huge pressure. It can crack the paper. Just a little fact though. Yeah, I looked, I looked this up, and it's actually, so if you're five miles away from a nuclear weapon, the, the, the pressure from the stiletto heel is actually higher. I want to be more than five miles away from a nuclear weapon. <laughs> Um, okay, so this, this is actually from uh, a little bit further along, but I think it's important. It's a classic problem called the particle in the box. Some people like it more than others. Uh, <coughs> so let's suppose we have a box here. And we have a mass which is moving with velocity v this way. Uh, and the length of this box is L. And this area is A. Um, so then we can ask, well, what, what pressure does this exert on, the, uh, on this face? because it will bounce off of this back here, back here, back here. So when it bounces off of this face, the change in momentum uh, is equal to 2mv, because it, it basically just elastically scatters off of the, uh, the face of the box. So this is for the particle. Uh, and since momentum is conserved, delta P of the box uh, is equal to 2mv also. So this is for the box. And so how often does this happen? Uh, it has to travel a length L and then back and then uh, back again. So it has to travel a length 2L because it has to go here, here, and then here. Um, well, okay, well, it, so when it, it first hits, it hits here, then it has to travel here and then back here, so it's 2L. So uh, delta T, so the length of time between collisions is equal to 2L. And it's traveling at a velocity v. Uh, and then, so we know, all, is everyone good on this already? So f is equal to delta p over delta t, as we know. Uh, so this is equal to, so 2 2 L V over 2 L over V. Uh, so the twos cancel, the V goes up. So you have M T squared times times one over L. Um, And so um, something that you'll learn in statistical mechanics is uh, that the energy that is in the, par the particles in a gas is uh, 
distributed throughout the degrees of freedom. So if it's traveling in one direction, another direction, or another direction, it's, it's equally distributed. And there's also vibrational uh, degrees of freedom, like in molecules. So like nitrogen gas can, uh, is composed of two nitrogen atoms, and these can vibrate. Uh, they can also, the, the, the molecule can also rotate. Um, but for an ideal gas like this, like something like hel uh, helium, um, you have that mv squared, which is proportional to the kinetic energy, uh, is equal to uh, something called a Boltzmann constant. Uh, times the temperature. So if we take um, so now we have that the uh, force is equal to uh, the Boltzmann constant times the temperature, and uh, if we have n particles doing this, then the force you multiply by n, right? Okay, this is, this is also over L. But if you want the pressure, then uh, you need to write pressure equals kb T and over L times uh, the area. So you're dividing force by the area. Um, so this is so this is of course equal to the volume. And um, so this implies P V equals N. K, B, T. And you've probably seen this before. It's the ideal gas law. Have you ever seen it to write this one? No. It's in the end. And oh, this is the number of particles in the in the box. So, uh, so if you have, so this is the this is the um, term for one particle. And I replaced the. So I, I did this maybe a little poorly, but uh, it, if you ignore the n, you have one particle because I just replaced mv squared with kbt. Uh, and then I multiply it by n for n particles because the, the force will be proportional to the number of particles hitting the wall. So this is n. The only thing you have to take on faith is the first statement of variable n v squared is k t. Yeah, that's, yeah, you have to, yeah, so if you want to understand this better, you have to take higher level physics. Which is available in the spring semester of everybody wants to do it for them teaching. It would be awesome. You just have to have taken 132 and that method before. It's pretty simple. So the uh, so the next topic will be uh, atmospheric pressure.
Okay. So say you're standing on Earth. Uh, so there's all this gas around us, right? Like there's. So what is the atmosphere mostly made of? Nitrogen. Nitrogen, right? So it's something like seventy-five or eighty percent nitrogen. Uh, and so it extends a certain amount up into space. So let's call that H. And so if we want to figure out how much pressure the atmosphere exerts on us, uh, this is also a little, I'll also do some little voodoo with this, but um, so nitrogen gas at room temperature, so the velocity is uh, about 500 meters per second. And so if the nitrogen is near the uh, surface of the Earth, the fastest moving particles that move upward uh, will have a kinetic energy of 1 half and be in 2 squared. And though they will reach a maximum height of mgh. Uh, so in this equation, the m's cancel, uh, and one gets um, one gets that h is equal to uh, one half v n squared uh, divided by g. And this is approximately, um, so th this constant, uh, it does change as you uh, go higher up, but not on the scale that the atmosphere extends. And this is about 13 kilometers. Um, so, What is the pressure? At the surface of the Earth. Um, so the, the density, the mass density of the atmosphere which is equal to the mass of the atmosphere over the volume. Um, so this is approximately one kilogram meter cube. So if you want the pressure the atmosphere exerts, this is equal to mg, right, over a, uh, which would be equal to also um, the density of the atmosphere times the volume over G times G over H. that last part. Rho uh, V G over A. Right. 
So this is equal to rho uh, gh. And this is actually an equation that you should memorize for sure. How did you get the density of the one per drop? Uh, yeah, I just looked it up. Just the right number. Right, I mean, yeah. it, it's it's average for like the atmosphere. I was just trying to derive the height of the atmosphere in a club rowing. Yeah. Would this equation apply under the water? Uh, so, so the equation, if, if you want the pressure on the water, you also use this equation. So you would use the density of water instead of instead of the density of the air. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so rho g h. So we know rho, rho is uh, so the pressure of the atmosphere is equal to um, <coughs> so it's equal to the density times the height, which is thirteen kilometers times the uh, times g which is 10 uh, meters per second squared so this is equal to um, so this is 10 to the 3 so then when you multiply this it's 10 to the 4 um, Okay, so, right, yeah, kilogram per meter squared, cubed, Kil uh, kilometers, meters per second squared. So this is 1.3 times 10 to the 4 meters. This is 10 meters. So this is 10 to the 5 uh, pascals. Um, well, 1.3. Okay, that's the real pressure. So the real pressure is so it's 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 pretty close. So one question that you might ask is uh is there any question? This is 1.3 times 10 to the 5 is the 1.3. Yeah, this is 1.3, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Any other questions? There is a great story about this sort of question. I'm just looking up to get the names right. If you want to tell it, I can. About what? About atmospheric pressure. Sure. First measure about it. You want me to tell it? Sure. If you want to keep going. Uh, it's a good place for me to interject the story. Yeah, sure. A, 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 a funny anecdote. Once upon a time, there was a guy. I just looked up his name, thank God, I found him called Perrier, like the water. And he was a friend of a guy called Pascal, like that, Pascal. And Pascal was a lazy bastard. I don't know if that's true or not, maybe I don't. And he persuaded Perrier to build a barometer and carry it up a mountain. Do you guys know what a barometer is? How do you make one? How do you make a barometer? Like some big string of the bar or something? 
string of a box. No, like pin, like the, the pin pin on the box. That will work. Yeah. I want to use mercury. How would you make a mercury barometer? So you use like a pan of mercury and yes, two that's so choose that dip head so that what's the pressure fluctuates it goes up and down. So you've got to, I used to play with mercury when I was running graduate, it's not fast to it's not fast. Hardly anything if you eat it, it's probably better. Don't eat it. So you take a, a bucket of mercury, liquid mercury. Pour some into a tube that's sealed at one end. How long does the tube have to be? Anybody know? It needs to be at least about a meter. Uh, so you fill it to the brim with mercury, put your thumb over the end of it, turn it upside down, and you put it into the bucket of mercury. Uh, the mercury will fall, there'll be a vacuum above it, and the atmospheric pressure is measured by the force pushing down the mercury to hold up that column of mercury that's about um, all over long mercury. Pressures in inches of mercury, 30 some inches. <coughs> Pascal was interested in how does pressure vary with, with, with the height of the atmosphere. And then this was back in the 17 somethings. And he persuaded, I think it was the Brun Renoir period, to go climb a mountain in the south of France. And he wrote a letter, Perrier, to Pascal reporting the results of it. Is this funny yet? <laughs> Jesus, you guys are a tough audience. So, as evidence of what he was doing, Perrier persuaded all of the dignitaries of the town to get up early on a Saturday morning. That included the abbot of the local monastery, some doctors, a couple of priests, all of these people who would be reliable witnesses. And he made two barometers. One of them he put under a tree town square together with a monk and left them there for the day so he could monitor how the pressure changed during the day in a static place. And the rest of them set off up the mountain. Hey ho, hey ho, carrying the mercury and the wherewithal to make a new barometer when they got to the top of the mountain. They got to the top of the mountain and they discovered, oh my god, pressure was less. And it came as a complete shock to them at the time. And they spent the rest of the day running around the top of the mountain, trying to figure out if there was other explanations besides altitude. <laughs> doesn't matter if the wind is blowing. doesn't matter if the sun is shining. What happens if it rains on us, which it did? And they wrote this down in a letter. It was the first measure of the variation of atmospheric pressure with altitude. I'll tell you the name of the mountain when I find it in the book. Here you go. All right. It was a true story. Well, we're talking about buoyancy now, so it's okay, appropriate. Sure. <laughs> uh, so, so one question you might ask is why? Why does this not exert some large force on us that yeah. crushes us? So that issue uh, is actually resolved by this which is that air is a fluid. And so probably the most familiar like fluid that you think of is water. And so let's suppose that we have a, a container of water and we place a block on the surface. Uh, and this has mass m. For now, that doesn't matter. And we're holding it, and we're slowly lowering it down. So what you have is at the surface of the water, you have the block, and inside the uh, water, you have many water molecules. And these molecules are not tightly bound. Like, not like the ones that I'm standing on right now, thankfully. Uh, so when you have two, like, let's say that we take these two molecules, 
and we exert a force on we exert a force on this one. These are repelling each other electromagnetically. So this is the force of the block. This is uh, this is the force of uh, so it's electromagnetic. Now, if you, if you push this down, this water molecule will get closer to this one because it's, it's going down like this. They exert a force on each other this way, but they can't really move up and down, so they move sideways. Uh, and so what happens, what ends up happening is that uh, you have... Uh, you end up with the situation where you, you know, have lowered the, the block. And you have uh, a pressure in this direction. you end up with a pressure in this direction because these, these molecules are repelling each other sideways. And then the same situation happens here because you're compressing, you're trying to compress it this way so it ends up pushing up this way. And the same happens on the other side. So until the block reaches a certain point, the water will keep rising. Because otherwise, uh, you'll, 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 the molecules are unhappy because they're getting too close to each other and repelling each other in this direction. Um, so uh, we can ask, you know, what what is the equilibrium point that is reached when when the block is submerged in the water? Um, and we know that. Uh, and so we know that the, the pressure here has to be equal to the pressure of the displaced <coughs> water, so this, 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 this portion here. And this is M. So Mg over the area of the block uh, has to be equal to um, the density of water. times uh, G uh, times H, where this is, this is H. Um, and so H, H can actually be written as the volume of the, of the water over the area of the water. Um, so if we rewrite this equation, mg, I'm not very good at writing on words, mg is equal to the rho of water times g times the area of the block that's submerged times h. So this is the displacement of the water. Yeah. Did you say that was rho or density of the water? Uh, it, it's both. This is rho. Oh, rho, rho, rho is, is the rate. mass density. Oh, my okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is so this is a displacement of the water. Uh, so volume, volume, displacement. Uh, this is the density. This is square. So this is. This whole thing here is the weight of the water. Water displays. Oh, so when on the right, yeah, on the right hand side of the 
distribution from its volume of water over the area of the water? Yeah. Is that the part that's being, the, the level that's risen? Yeah, so it's the water that's surrounding it. Uh, so the, the, the weight of the water on this side is rho water times V water, right? Times G. Uh, so if you want the pressure, the pressure is equal to this over the area of the water. So this is H. It's the same for the block and the water. That's why uh, that's why you end up with just the H in here instead of any volume or, or area. Should I keep going or no? Keep going. Okay, I have I have an entertaining problem. So there's there's an example problem with this in the book, um, and I like mine better, so I'm going to present it. Um, so suppose we build a tank which looks something like this. And uh, we take a bucket and we start pouring water in it. The water will start falling down. Uh, eventually, the pressure from gravity that's being exerted by the water itself will exert a pressure to the left, just like I was talking about. The water will start moving over here. Uh, then the pressure that's exerted here will be, you know, it can't, it can't push it here anymore, so it starts pushing up upward, exactly like with the block. Uh, and then eventually the water will rise to a level here, um, and we'll call that h naught. Um, so this area we'll call A1, we'll call A2. So this is the area of the opening in these two uh, pieces of the, of the tank. So these, they could be cylindrical, oval offices, anything. So we have, let's say we have a platform here. Uh, Trump's standing here with his snapback on, and he's already, so let's, let's say H naught is 10 meters. So Trump's already pretty high, but for some reason he wants to get even higher. So, <laughs> oh, I failed at the dead pan. Um, so he... Uh, tweets at Hillary saying, you know, come in on the other side through this door. This is the door here. Um, so they both go in at the same time. Uh, she's in a more confined space, as, as Trump would want 
Uh, and, you know, you might think, you know, it's not possible for Trump to get any higher because he weighs more, but he does get higher because the, the area of this is larger than the area of this. So let's say, let's say the mass of Trump is equal to 80 kilograms and the mass of Hillary is 60 kilograms. And H naught we know is equal to 10. So what will happen is Hillary exerts more pressure here and this pressure compresses the, the, the molecules of the water down here, and they're forced to the side, which creates a pressure here. These are forced to the side, which, or up, which creates a pressure on Trump. So Trump, Trump gets higher. And, um, oh God, actually this is a difficult uh, problem to solve. <laughs> but, uh, so there are two equations. Uh, one is that they'll, so they'll end up with at a uh, equilibrium. So Hillary will be down here. Trump will be like slightly higher. Um, and so we define H2. So that's the height of the trunk. H1, that's another uh, And so what we want is for the pressures to be equal. And uh, so the pressure, the pressure that Hillary exerts on, the, on the water is equal to M1 times G over A1. And this plus uh, rho times g times h1 is equal to m2 g over a2. So this is this is the pressure that Trump exerts uh, plus. So, so these 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 terms from the water come from looking at this point right here and calculating the mass, the pressure that's exerted by the water. So you calculate the mass, you divide by the area, you get the pressure. Uh, it doesn't matter where you look. You could look you could look here, um, or you could look you know at some point down here. As long as it's horizontal. Is everyone is everyone getting this? Uh, so, so um, the other the other equation that you need to solve this is that the volume of the water. So, so you know that. Okay, this is actually sorry, I made a mistake here. This is actually h naught. So the distance to this point is h naught. So. This is H1 and H2. So this volume of water does not change because the, the volume down here is constant. Uh, you just move water from here to here. So H1 um, times rho times A1. Uh, is equal to or uh, plus H2 rho times A2 is equal to H naught um, H1 A1 is So this actually turns out, okay, I actually don't want to 
complete solving this problem, we should do something else. But but this turns out to be about seven millimeters. Uh, so Trump doesn't get much higher, which isn't surprising. But uh, but yeah, uh, this, this is like the principle behind uh, hydraulic. The idea is that the pressure at the same height has to be the same. Right. Well, I mean. So she pushes down on a small area, so there's a big force. But, well, yeah, I mean, if you're forward. talking about, like, on Earth. Right. Any questions? Uh, so there's two choices for the next sort of path. I thought it would be time to do an experiment on oscillators. Just hooks low. Special maximum way to spend the rest of the Or we could do what we did last time, where we make up hard questions and try to solve them. I don't know. Oh, no. So let's do hooks low to experiment thoroughly. <laughs> Andre will be, no, no, I'm too tired. I'm too tired because I'm German. <laughs> ah, I'm too tired, I'm too old. Sermon 30. We did, we did 30 already. No, you didn't. Yeah, no, we didn't do 30. Yeah, you did so well, like get on it right now. Yeah, that's true. Same friends and enemies. 